Hi, everyone. My name's Alex. I'm one of the tutors here, um, mostly responsible for the CCC website, and I'm doing a PhD here in the design lab. Uh, I'm going to be covering the tutorials for the next three weeks, uh, and um, I'm really excited to cover some of this content because it gets kind of exciting. We, we know most of our basics of programming now, uh, and we get to get started. Uh, so uh, I'll see you guys in the videos. I'm going to be covering today's tutorial, which is going through a really useful thing in P5 called arrays. So arrays are essentially lists of values, um, and we can use them to store all kinds of things. Typically, we like to store all variables of the same type in an array. Uh, so let's just get started and look at the syntax. So to create an array, just like any other variable, we declare it with let. So I'm going to call mine my array. Uh, and to create an array, we use the square brackets, like this. Um, and so what we can do is we can create a list of whatever we'd like. In this case, I'm going to create a list of animals. Uh, and so I'm just going to write in strings, uh, cat, dog, uh, bird. And you can see here the syntax is square brackets. And then inside it, we list all of the numbers or variables that we'd like separated with commas. So in this case, I've made an array full of strings. I could do a number array uh, and store in it a whole lot of numbers. 10, 12, 6, 2.5, whatever. Typically, we want to try and store all the same type in an array. So I wouldn't then have, you know, the word uh, lizard in here. That would be weird. Um, it's best practice to try and store all the same type. So all numbers in this one and then all strings in this one. We can also create arrays that are empty just by writing bracket bracket. Uh, and then if we'd like to maybe in setup, we can initialize the elements individually. And the way we do this is we can say my array, and I want the first element, which is called my array zero, uh, and I can store something in here. So I could store cat, I could store my array one, which is the second location in my array, I could store dog, and my array two, I could store uh, bird. So this is the same as what I was doing before. Um, and it's introducing here a new bit of syntax as well. So if we want to access an element in an array, we write the name of the array and then square brackets. And then inside the square brackets, we write what's called an index. Okay. So this is saying we want the first element in my array. This is saying we want the second element in my array. And this is saying I want the third element in my array. It's a little bit counterintuitive because it starts at zero and then it goes one, two, uh, but you'll get used to it. It's a bit, it's a bit weird, uh, but essentially in my array here, so I had cat, dog, and bird. This is the first element, but it's got index zero. This has got index one and index two. So I just write that down here. This is zero, this one's one, and this one's two. A little bit counterintuitive, we start at zero and we count up. So this is how we can store or change individual elements. So maybe I want to change cat to lizard on the fly. Um, and so now my array would be lizard, dog, bird. This is also how we can access the values to use them. So for example, I might want to draw some text on my screen uh, and I could access the uh, first element in my array, so index zero. Uh, and let me just put this text in the middle of the screen. Get rid of the draw function. Uh, and so when we run this, we see lizard in the middle of the screen, because that is the element inside zero. It's a little hard to see. Uh, text size, make it bigger. Lizard. Okay. So if I change this now to say, uh, what's another animal? Lion. Uh, we should see lion appears in the middle. Okay. So this is how you access an element, and you can also use it to set elements in the array. Often with arrays, we need to uh, loop through all of the elements in the array, not just access one or two of them. Uh, and this is when our trusty for loop can become really useful. So I might write a really basic for loop here. Let i equal zero. i is less than three. i plus plus. And this array is going to be accessed using my for loop now. So instead of saying my array zero, I want to access my array i, which is going to go 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, accessing all three elements in my array. Um, and of course, if I run this, it's going to write all the text on top of each other, so it's not going to look really good. Um, 
you can see it all, all combines. So maybe let's just, you know, multiply or, or add some i on here to my, my height, something like i times uh, 50 will just mean that they're spread out a little bit better. So now we can see the elements in my array. So this is fine, uh, but sometimes we're going to have arrays where we're just suddenly going to want to add a new pr element. So a fourth element up here, just let me get rid of this. Um, and of course now our, our loop is not working properly because it's only doing the first three elements. Uh, now I could have some value up here like array uh, number, which is equal to four because there's four elements in my list. And I could use that down here. And that's fine, that's one solution. And now we can see all four elements are being listed out. But there's actually a really smart way of doing this using a built-in feature of the array. So I write my array dot length, and this is a special property of my array, which tells us how many elements are in the, in the list, okay? So this is gonna be equal to four because there's four elements in the list. Uh, and so this is a really quick and easy way of doing this. And so now, as I just keep adding more and more elements on, it's going to automatically spread them out down my page thanks to this my, my array dot length. Okay, so super useful feature there. One nice final thing about arrays before we get started with the first challenge is that they work really nicely with random. So if I wanted to get one of these animals, maybe it's my fave, uh, that is going to be equal to a random, and then I can put this array in here, my array. And what this is going to do is it's going to select one of the elements out of this array at random. Uh, so now let's just draw that out in the middle of the screen, uh, and we should be able to see every time we run the program, we get a different random animal. So lizard the first time, lizard the second time, that's, that's lucky, lizard the third time, fourth time, finally lion. <laughs> Thought I was going crazy. Um, so you can see now it's, it's getting a random element out of the uh, array every time. So that's really useful. You don't even have to pass in an array here. You can just put a, a literal array. So if I wanted to pick a random number out of 10, 20, and 30, I can simply write it like that, and it'll pick one randomly. Um, although it seems to like to be a bit inconsistent. So super useful there. Quick, quick and easy way to select a random value. Really good for selecting a random color. Um, so you can pass in, you know, two different color variables and it will pick between them, uh, whatever you sort of, uh, like to do with it. So, you can get all kinds of effects using the array there. Oh, yes. Now, a little mistake here, of course, you've got to put the square brackets so that it knows you're talking about an array not just multiple elements, okay? So little note there, random. If you say, I want to pick a random element between 10, 20, 30, and 40, that won't work. But if you put it inside square brackets, inside an array, it will work. So it's going to pick a random one from there, okay? So we can now jump into the first challenge, um, which is rel relatively straightforward. We have these four ellipses here. And every time we run the program, there are uh, a couple of them are at random heights. Um, and the way we're doing this is we're storing their sizes and we're storing the heights in arrays. So you can see at the top here, we stored all of the different sizes of our circles um, in an array at the top. The heights we've just declared as an empty array so that we can initialize all of the values down here in setup. Um, the reason we're doing that is simply because we don't have access to height at the top here, and we also don't have access to the random function at the top here either. So we've just moved this down here so that we can initialize things based on the height. You can see down here in the draw loop, we've called the circle command four times, and you can see we're accessing the height parameter, the size parameter, and we're changing the width location. Um, so your task here is going to be to use a for loop to neaten up this code down here, um, a for loop that loops through the elements in our array. Uh, don't bother creating a for loop for this part up here because, you know, some of it's different. Um, if you'd like to, you can make them all random or anything like that, but uh, the main task here is to put this in a for loop. So this can take a little bit of time, uh, probably about 15 minutes, so, so pause the video here and work on that challenge, um, and then we'll come back and talk about arrays a little bit further. ...to each other, so we'll talk about them both now. 
something that's really useful with arrays is the ability to store a whole lot of random numbers. So in the first challenge here, you can see that we have this really basic design with basic shapes. Uh, they're randomly located on the screen with a random rotation. They have a random color and they're a random shape between a triangle, a square and a circle. Uh, we've been able to make designs like this in the past. Uh, and the thing that's been really common is we've had to add this no loop or do all of our code in setup because if we remove it, we get this crazy flashing design where the shapes are changing randomly every single frame. Uh, and that's because every frame we're creating new random numbers to store the location, the rotation, uh, the color, and even the shape. Your challenge here is to use arrays to store these random parameters instead. So you can see here, instead of having a random rotation assigned every single frame in draw, we instead assign the random values up here in setup. And this means they're only being assigned once. Uh, and this is great because it means we're not going to get that flashing design if we have our draw loop running. Um, the challenge here is to do the X and Y coordinates. You can see we've already got the random rotation, color, and name done for you. So it's a really easy exercise just to add an X and a Y array here. Um, if you've done this challenge correctly, you will have simply recreated the design above, except now the no loop command can be removed. Um, so it's not super useful yet, but as we can see in the final step here, what we're going to be able to do is animate our design. So because we're no longer having this no loop problem, our program can actually run. Uh, and you can see here what we've done is we've created three new arrays to modify the X, Y, and the rotation of each of our shapes. Uh, it's a bit of a beast of code here, so it can take a bit to get your head around it. But you can see down here we are updating our x and y locations based on these other arrays. Okay, There's a little bit of extra code here that makes sure that when they leave the screen the shapes get teleported back to the middle, um, but ultimately the idea here is that we're using arrays to store all of these different parameters, the x and y, the rotation and the shapes, and that way we can modify them on the fly. Um, and that lets us create these kinds of animation effects. So your task here is to experiment with the animation, play around with it a little bit, um, but also experimenting with changing the shapes and uh, applying some of the other skills we've learned in previous weeks. As I said, the other challenge here using arrays with functions is very similar. Uh, and the idea behind this one is to take the target function and the weird shape function from previous weeks and apply this same concept. So where we previously had no loop, we want to change this up so that the program is actually running and the draw loop is running uh, and we're storing these positions and the, the number of circles in our targets in arrays. The same thing with weird shape. Weird shape can be pretty tricky because there's all of these points. So you might need to store your arrays um, in arrays or something complicated like that. So if you can't get through step two, that's totally okay. Um, it's, a, it's a little bit more tricky here. So uh, this will take probably the rest of the class. Um, if you've got a little bit more time at the end, then I'm going to quickly talk about the recommended challenge uh, and how you can use some of the built-in functions from P5. Uh, but for now, we're going to do these two challenges together um, and uh, we'll see the real power of arrays here. Okay. Okay, so if you have a little bit more time at the end of class today, we'll quickly talk about the, the final challenge here using built-in array methods. Um, this is just a recommended challenge, but it's got some really nice features in it uh, which are worth exploring. So uh, we already saw the dot .length uh, parameter that we have access to in arrays, um, but there's actually a few other things that arrays can do, and this is all documented in the JavaScript documents. So we've already learned how to read the P5 reference, um, but some things belong to JavaScript rather than P5, uh, and arrays is one of those. So if we have a look here on the docu document, um, you can see there's a lot of information about how arrays work. But on the left here, we can see there's all of these different methods which we have access to with arrays. So I'm just going to talk about some of the most useful ones um, and how we can use them. So uh, one of the most useful is the dot index of command. So I'm just going to search that up, index of. Um, let me get it on the left here. Index of. 
So what the index of command does is it lets us search an array for a particular element. So you can see here they've got an animal array just like I did. Let me just zoom in a little bit. Uh, and you can see here they're asking for the index of the bison element. So this is going to tell us it's going to search through our array and it's going to try and find bison. So you can see here it finds it at the index position 1, so 0, 1, uh, and it's going to give us that value back, 1. So this is useful for finding where an element is inside your array. Um, you can see here if you look for something that doesn't exist in your array, like giraffe, it gives you negative 1. So this can be kind of useful for finding if an element isn't in your array at all, checking if something doesn't exist in a list. Um, that's, so that's index of. Uh, another really useful command is the push command. So sometimes we just want to add an element to the end of our array, uh, and that's what the push command does. So we can write um, dot push, and it's going to add an element to the end of our array. So you can see here, um, pigs, goats, sheep. If we push cow, our array becomes pigs, goats, sheep, cows, because cows gets pushed to the end of our array. Um, so that's a really useful one as well. Finally, um, for this exercise, you're probably going to need to use the shift command. So shift is really useful because it can shuffle your array down. So it moves every element down to the left, and the first element here gets removed. Um, the task for the uh, recommended challenge here, you can see, is we've got this array of locations, and we want it when it goes off the left, it comes around to the right. And the way we can do this is by shuffling our array down to the left, and taking this element that got removed and adding it back onto the right hand side. Uh, and shift can let us do that because it moves everything down to the left like we need, uh, and it gives us this element that was removed from the far left so that we can push it back to the far right. So a little bit tricky here, but you can combine the shift command with the push command to create this kind of effect here. Um, of course, there's a few other ways you could do this, but this is one of them. A couple of other commands, you can see there's a dot sort, which is useful for, you know, if you need to sort your elements. Uh, and the final one I'm going to talk about is the splice command. And this one can be a little bit tricky because it does a whole lot of different things. Uh, but what I'm going to show you is how to remove an element from an array. So here we've got an array called animals. It's got cat, dog, bird, and lizard in it. And at the moment, you can see when I print it out to the console, we get cat, dog, bird, lizard. If I want to remove an element from this array, I can use the splice command like this. Now, there's a lot of ways you can use splice, um, and this is the way you use it to remove an element. You write the index of the element you'd like to remove, and I'm just writing one here because I want to remove just one element. Okay, so if you're removing a single element, this is the sort of pattern you use. This is the index, and we're just removing one element, so you just leave that as a one. Uh, so in this case, if I want to remove bird, I write index 2, because 0, 1, 2. And you can see now when I print out my array, I get cat, dog, lizard. Bird has been removed from that position there. You can combine it with the index of command uh, to remove a particular element. So index of bird is going to look through my array to find the index of bird. So it's going to get number 2 and it's going to give that to my splice command to be removed. So you can now remove a particular element. So if I want to remove um, if I want to remove dog, I can do that like this. And so now it removes dog. So that's the final one. Um, there's of course a lot more you can see here if you'd like to uh, experiment with them, see what else you can do with splice. Um, and if you have any other things to do with JavaScript, you can always look through the JavaScript reference here in general. Okay, so that's it for today's challenges. Um, take your time to understand arrays, they're really useful, and uh, we'll see you guys for the quiz next week. Um, and check out the video uh, that Kaz will put out describing what's going on with that.